So Terry, welcome to the Prophecy Club. Thank you, Stan. Yeah, this was interesting. And, and that's why I think when I emailed you, I was like, you know, you connect the dots and you can see what they're attempting to do. So I think this is going to be a very interesting program today, discussing not just what they're trying to do with the United Nations, but how that correlates to government legislation to our own savings and banking accounts and why that's so important to understand. We need cash in a bank, but we better be diversified out with tangible assets and other investments because it's not your money. And I'd like to get into a little bit of that. Okay, the mic's yours, brother. Take it away. Oh, thank you, Stan. So basically, a lot of folks, I'm glad to hear this. This has been wonderful to hear that a lot of folks have been talking about what's taking place right now in the United Nations. This is the World Health Organization Health Assembly. And what they're discussing now, this is all the Davos crowd, the Davos people. And this is not really getting to the core of what the Pfizer CEO said where he was bragging about the fact that they have a pill with a microchip in it now to notify so-called doctors or any government agency that you took a pill. That's a whole side note. What they're doing at this World Health Assembly is discussing uh, the pandemic treaty. So we're talking about the deep state in the Western world, uh, not just the United States, but in the Western world itself. This is a centralized pandemic response that is going to be controlled and run by the United Nations World Health Organization, the, the WHO. Now, I've seen the actual paperwork on it, what they were trying to do, and they'll say, oh, this is too much hype. We're never going to take control. All we really want to do is be able to coordinate information so people can make better decisions. That's just not true. What they're really aiming for, if you really read it into the fine print, is the World Health Organization, the one who was seriously behind the misinformation on everything that happened the last couple of years, is going to be directly in charge, given by a United Nations treaty of not only pandemic response, but medical decision. So you can see where it's going not only into forced jab territory, which that'll be a big debate, but this is part of the control mechanism. But bigger than that, they will be central because they were this last time around. They will be central into forcing the idea of a V passport. And, and we, let's not forget that. That wasn't too long ago, six months ago, where there were major cities in the United States, the blue cities, where they were mandating that you had this passport on your phone. Now in Sweden and England, they were putting that passport literally into a microchip into your hand. And in that microchip, it gave your vaccination statuses and medical information, but it also has social information, social media information, your banking, your financing, and we all know in the kingdom what that is. And now I don't know if that is the, I would say probably more a precursor leading to, but the fact they're meeting right now to sign this treaty by 2024 is really important because it'll lead up to the next point. And when we connect these dots, it's, it's unbelievable. Once they can get a global commitment where we have to submit to whatever they say and the next whatever happens in the next pandemic that comes around the corner and we know because of information now that we've learned that these a lot of them are leaked from laboratories accidentally if you know what i mean and this is going to lead into a global control grid digitally now this is besides the point of digital money once they do this, they, they want this signed by 2024. So I'm gaining that this is lining up with a lot of the financial issues that are going on, um, the collapsing of the banking system globally. I really believe the whole angle of the, the war in Russia and Ukraine is a complete distraction. I think that is something to take us away from the fact we have extraordinary amounts of inflation because of money printing, because the banking systems are collapsing and they're doing what we call a hyper parabolic move in, in printing money. Once the United Nations gets the countries on board 
And I really believe that the current people in charge in our country would sign this agreement. Thank God for some um, you know, prevailing heads that down in uh, Brazil, Bolsonaro, he's flat out said, no way he's signing it. But here's the crazy loophole on it. They said that as long as 70% of the countries are on board, every one part of the United Nations will have to submit. I personally think there's going to be internal debates over that. But remember, these United Nations treaties are pretty serious. And I believe it's going to be the mechanism they will use to implement these chip controls for all of our freedoms. Now, that's one aspect that I see coming. This is happening right now, literally today, as we're recording this interview, they're discussing this and they're discussing other things that are far more nefarious for our freedoms and our sovereignty. Now, I do believe there are people in this country who will not tolerate this. I know uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis, a courageous man he is, flat out said he wouldn't go for it. But see, the United Nations Treaty has a different binding mechanism to our constitutional sovereignty. So it really puts up red flags for me because then it brings up the next point, Stan, and this I'm going to have to read for because I, I want to read it actually verbatim, but it's extraordinary. It's called our government bail-in system. Now, remember what happened in Cyprus and Greece back in the time when they defaulted? They actually had a bail-in where they went and took the money from the account holders to help support the banks. Well, there was an interesting thing that took place for many people that are into crypto or interested Coinbase is an exchange. Basically, it's like a bank for cryptocurrency coins. They have a bankruptcy disclosure. In that bankruptcy disclosure, they said the following words. I want to say this verbatim because it's extraordinarily similar to what's in the government legislation on our own banking and saving accounts. Basically, the custodial held crypto assets may be considered to be property of a bankruptcy estate in the event of a bankruptcy, which these exchanges are definitely going down. And I can tell you there will be many, many banks going down too with what's getting ready to happen. The crypto assets would we hold in custody on behalf of our customers, they say, could be subject to bankruptcy proceedings and our such customers could be treated, here it is, as our general unsecured creditors. No longer is it yours. You're an unsecured creditor. Our government already has claim to our savings. So when this happened in Cyprus in the bail-in in 2013, a lot of people didn't think much of it. Oh, that's Greece. That's not us in the Western half. And that's not the United States. Let me read this one. Now, this is a passage that comes out of the Canadian law. Now, we remember what just happened to the Canadian truckers when they did a peaceful protest. The government right in and took their money and their financial assets right out of the bank. That's why I'm trying to put this together because when you connect these dots of the bigger picture of what's coming and the stuff that you've been talking about that is happening out there, this is how they're going to treat us and our assets and why it's vital to have gold and silver tangible assets outside of the banking system. But listen to this law that is in the Canadian side. This one's amazing. The government proposes to implement a bail-in regime for systemically important banks. Now, that could be argued smaller banks. Maybe we can get away with it. But the regime will be designed to ensure that in an unlikely event, which we know is coming, systemically important bank depletes its capital they're all leveraged 20, 30 to one. So you deposit $1 in a bank. The bank is loaning out $30. They're all insolvent. So if there is a systemic collapse in the system, most banks are going to be in serious trouble. But they go on to say the bank can be recapitalized and returned to viability through the very rapid conversion of certain bank liabilities into regulatory capital. Now that's a lot of bank speak. You're the liability. We are the liability. Our savings account 
and our checking accounts are liabilities to a bank. They can take them right there. Certain bank liabilities. See, they use these words. Now, many of us don't realize in the United States this was done, and this was the statutory bail-in provision that comes out of the 2010 Dodd-Frank bill right after the 2008 collapse. Now, here's the part that gets me, that why I think this is connecting globally. The fact is, if you're living in one of the largest economies globally, which we are the number one, your country is part of a supranational agreement, flexible bank bail-in bonds put in place in the Brisbane Summit in 2014. Basically, what we're doing, if you can see those two things I just talked about, we not only have an international agreement to bail out the banks with our savings and our money, but now we're giving an international, we haven't yet, but I know people in the White House now will sign it. We are giving over our freedom and our sovereignty to our medical decisions, especially when it comes to the, the idea of passport and tracking. They are bent on making sure if they win, and I'm not you know, under the impression they're going to win. I like to pray and get all of us to pray that they don't. There are serious issues right now in not only the banking system in the United States, but globally. The inflation we're seeing is just the beginning. The food crisis that is coming, just the beginning. There's only 10 weeks of wheat supply globally, as they're saying. And that's just getting started. They have systematically taken action to cause a lot of the issues we're having, not just in the food supply, but in the energy world, why we're paying so much for gas, diesel, and the expense of the diesel is why prices are going up for products and services and goods as well. They are shuttering. They were told through the part of this Green New Deal which is the United Nations attachment to all this. If you start to see where I'm going with this, they're all, this is all coming together. They are shuttering power plants, refining facilities earlier than their termination date. They're shutting them down right now in the middle of a crisis. And we just had, for those that saw it, Mr. Biden even came out and said, that this is a good thing because it'll help us get off of fossil fuel into this new age of new energy. I personally say, if you were really going there, why didn't you have the technology of new energy first before you really stick it to and harm we the people? But all this is part of a bigger picture. They want to use climate change, which by the way, with the solar flares coming, we're actually going into a cooling phase, but they want to use the climate change as a reason to control we the people. They're talking this week in that UN meeting, not only about the pandemic treaty, they're talking about actually implementing technology to, and they say it's voluntary, but remember, so was social security. That was supposed to be voluntary and it's not anymore. They're even discussing your footprint where you travel, how you travel. And if you do things right, like what they say is right, then they will give you points and bonuses in your profile. Now, what gets me, Stan, at the end of all of this, who elected these United Nation bureaucrats and technocrats like Klaus Schwab, that psychopathic Satan, who elected these people to have authority over we in the United States. But when we give rights over to the United Nations through these treaties, we actually turn over our freedom and sovereignty to these very entities. And these are people who are not only not elected by the people, they're technocrat, bureaucrat. And we don't have to go down the rabbit hole of how evil a lot of those organizations are. They try to say they're here to help. They're here to take control of this issue we have in the world. 
and they are going to help us. I don't believe a word of it. It is the mark and the design I mean, of controlling everything we do, which I think goes not only to the mark of the beast, I mean, and so to all control of us. Absolutely. All right. Now, so what, I, I know that one of the prophecies says that there's going to be a 30% decline in our money. Yeah. Do you think that that's going to be something gradual? And it, could it be that just we wake up one morning and all of a sudden 30% has been taken out of our checking accounts, our savings accounts, our kids' savings accounts, or everything? Just 30% just, or is it devaluation of the dollar? How do you It'd see be, that happen? It would be a devaluation of the dollar. Um, how that's actually going to work is as we like right now, for instance, we used to buy gasoline and it was only $2 a gallon. I remember actually it was a dollar a gallon, right? But now it's costing us $5 a gallon. So basically that dollar bill isn't buying us the same thing anymore. It's depleted in value. That's why I love the whole idea of silver because I'm still buying, what, five gallons of gas uh, with, with the same silver dollar that was equal to a paper dollar, yet a paper dollar can't even buy you a fifth of a gallon of gas. That's why silver is so vital to preservation of our buying power. Now, the other assets can be too, but as you see what's going on in front of us, we're entering into a serious global recession, beyond serious global recession. We have a 13-year economic expansion, the largest of printing money in economic expansion in US history, let alone in the world. We have printed more money in the course of two weeks than the United States did in 250 years. So when you start putting all that together at a time we're winding down this economic power that we were, and I really believe this was by design in this way, and here's why, and I'll get to the point on what you just asked. We were in peace mode. There was really no war going on. We were winding down. We were pulling troops away. It was set up to leave Afghanistan, not the way we did, of course, but it was set up to leave and everything was peaceful. Russia was never going to invade. It was never going to happen. And then we start building up the military. There's neo-Nazis in Ukraine. And before you know it, they, you know they're pushing the buttons, they're flying airplanes, and they're bombing the Russian citizens in the eastern part forcing Russia into this tactic. This is what I think is the distraction element, but it's what they do at the end times. Like I don't even, I, it, it, China's even behaving oddly. Now, I don't know why, except that they are preparing. If anything, they are taking steps to prepare people for time of war. They're taking control of food. They're doing different things. So what's really going on? So what happens is in these times, if you look through history, when we've had this level of extremism, which I think we're at the end of a cycle, the currency that we're holding, the dollars we're holding now will literally be worthless. Similar now, it won't go to zero per se, well, it might, but put it this way, what it used to buy a full dollar's worth of goods a hundred years ago is now only buying you know, like four cents of goods, right? So it's... We've lost a lot of value already. Just think of the movie Gone with the Wind. They were super rich in the South. The currency went to zero. And then she's sitting in that carriage, reaches in her pocket and pulls out a handful of gold. And she's like, oh my gosh, we can do something. We can do something. Now a little help from Rex or you know her lover, but that gold started it. We are nearing, if we don't stop the insanity of what's going on in Europe right now, we are nearing a potential world war conflict or if anything economic conflict to a level that will crush these currencies which by the way the us dollar is already done it's got its 50-year cycle it's part of it it's out it needs a new one if you look back we've already had multiple currencies in our time this cycle is done so at the end of a cycle, what will happen to like your question, when they say 30% loss, 40% loss, the dollars we're holding in our savings, our retirement accounts, um, even in our wallet for that matter, we all know are not buying the same anymore. It's costing more for food, for gas, 
for energy, for rent, for clothing, for everything, meaning that dollar is losing so much of its ability to buy. Yet the silver, the gold, land, other tangible assets have gone up so much. So if we had our money in other tangible assets, we would be holding ground on that losing of buying power. So when they say it will lose, it could be literally overnight. If they don't control this scenario over in Europe, you could see currencies collapse overnight. The markets are already down about 20%. And I think that's just the beginning. If it really unleashes, the currencies will absolutely collapse. And that will be why they're, they're, the profits are saying that, because they will need a new currency to restart the global order. And that's why I wanted to connect some of these dots, because they have in place, they can take your money from your bank accounts called bail-ins. It's already there. You're an unsecured creditor. Money you have in a bank is not yours. It belongs to the bank. You're giving them a loan. They now are taking control of our medical decisions if they pass this treaty, which they will. But it's not about the medical. It's about the passport, the chip in the hand. You do not comply with what we say. You will not be allowed to travel or buy or sell. And okay. what does that let me, sound like? Let me, let me jump in here a little bit. Okay, so if they want to find out how this works. Uh, I think one of the things you said before, you suggested that they just call Cornerstone and just open an account or start a dialogue with them, start talking, and they can actually help them to make decisions on what's the best for their situation, yeah. gold, silver, rhodium, whatever. Also mm -hmm. 401ks, talk to us about that. Yeah. yeah, IRAs, your retirement accounts, your savings, your cash, Def, definitely. And what we're learning, a lot of people, they don't quite understand how silver works. And so we, we definitely walk them through and explain to them the prices, what they see in a computer and why they're different when you buy the physical. I mean, when you go buy an American government coin right now, you're going to pay about 60% above the price that's on the computer. That's how much just the government silver ego cost above because the manipulation in the system is so bad. But we help walk people through that. We show them the options. We give them the best uh, opportunity to maximize their protection and preservation by taking that part of diversification away from where they're at now in the paper world or in currency and put it in physical, tangible assets like silver and gold, where you can either take home, bury it in the backyard, a million places people tell me they put it, or have it in a private depository, which is still safe and assured away from the actual okay, system. How do they actually send the money? Because I know when I got some stuff from you, I was shocked that you basically said, I'll, I'll just take a check on the phone. Mm -hmm. I mean, right, right then, check on the phone. I know that was new to me, by the, the way. On the part of a check, <laughs> yeah. And boom, you yeah. had it. I mean, so it can be very quickly. So talk yes. about that. Yes, that was fairly new to me, too. Uh, during the pandemic, uh, they started to come up with kind of new policies. They started allowing things to do things differently electronically. We had the option to start taking the, uh, check information right over the phone. It's in a recorded transaction, so everyone's secured for it. But then we can process that literally those funds immediately. It doesn't matter the size of the check. We've had them at it's very serious six figure levels. It doesn't matter. That is one aspect for a quick process. Now, it does take seven days for the check to actually collect the funds. But after that, the, 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 it goes into the process in the order queue. When it comes to the IRA, 401ks, or money, this is a big one, money that's coming from an investment account. Boy, are we seeing some uh, pushback. We are seeing people given the runaround like you wouldn't believe. Banks. Investment firms are trying, trying to keep you up from putting it into gold and silver. Well, not just the gold and silver. They don't want you taking it out of their institution because they took your money. Let's say you have a hundred thousand in the bank. They went out and lent out 2.5 million. So if you take that hundred thousand out of the bank, they have to go reconcile that two and a half million somehow. They don't want you taking that out of that bank or that brokerage firm or investment account for nothing. And they definitely don't want you having gold and silver because it's not free. They What's have that? to release it though. Well, they do. 
but what we've been seeing, which I knew this was coming, I've seen this time on time again, they delay, they, they try to talk you out of it. They try everything they can to delay or make it difficult to do. Not that all the time. Most of the time it can happen right smoothly. There. What's that? I said, that ought to tell you it's the thing to do right there. Well, that's kind of where I'm getting at. I've had people call us up and they, I've had some just darling sweet ladies call up and just furious that the institution's trying to, you know, not let them get their funds and they, they harass them. That right there is my point is what should tell you, you better get out of the way because mm. it's not your money. When it's in an investment account or the bank, it's not your money. You have loaned it to them. That's why they give you a pittance of a percentage. Okay, let, me, of let me ask you another question. Now, I love the one ounce, whether it's mm -hmm. gold or silver. I don't have any rhodium or anything like that. Probably need to think about that. But there's a place for something other than a one ounce coin. Talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. One ounce coins are easy because they're, you could always sell off smaller amounts or you could barter or in some places in the country, you can even grocery shop with silver. These give you a credit. But there are other increments. You can do, you know, 10 ounce bars, 100 ounce bars, um, even some smaller in gold. People like to do smaller increments like 10th ounce coins because they're smaller. And so they'll be easier to transact in silver. I would be very hesitant to go above a 10 ounce bar. Um, it could be a little bit better price than a coin, but a 10 ounce bar in the future will be worth thousands of dollars. So when silver, let's say is $200, a 10 ounce bar is worth $2,000. But right now you're not even paying 300 for it. So when you sell it, you have to be ready for that large transaction to take place. So that's why I think coins are nice because you can sell off smaller amounts, but I have to say, just for straight disclosure, I like 10 ounce bars. <laughs> I do. I think there's value there because they're easier to store and you can take off with them if you had to. Uh, but they do cost you when you go to sell them because there'll be bigger transactions. So you just want to be aware of that. If you want to diversify into small increments, I think the one tenth ounce gold coin will be the best way. Gold isn't going to go up as high. I mean, it will probably double easy from where it is today. But silver will go up thousands of percent. So there's a big difference there. Really? Yeah, big What's time. What's your best guess a, on silver? Oh, yeah. Because gold is considered tier one money. It's going to go up. But the silver is being manipulated by the derivative world. And it's all fake and phony. And so when that breaks, which it's almost breaking, but when it does, it is going to be let loose and there will be no sellers. And so silver price will just skyrocket during that time but i have to admit one tenth ounce small gold coins like american gold eagle coins those are pretty nice to have having a tube of those 50 of those it's a pretty nice thing because it's small it's very valuable one little tiny coin will be worth hundreds of dollars and so it's a nice way to transact if you ever had to be on the run Okay, so someone's uh, thinking about getting some. How do they get a hold of you? Well, I would go to cornerstoneassetmetals.com. I would register for information for sure. They could give us a call, talk to any one of the representatives, 888-747-3309. I know you've said it before, we're all majorly on fire. Um, a lot of us even went to the Bible school together, so it's a very tight-knit group. We have very, very almost nothing now for risk aversion. We have very tight relationships. So things do happen smoothly. There is delays in, in delivery, um, getting hold of product. But as long as you get the funds in, it becomes what we call lock-in. And so we're able to actually buy the grain material. We own it. It's just a matter of converting it into the, the bar or the coin and then shipping it off to you. The actual inventory out there is getting difficult, so there's not always inventory around. So it is a matter of production as well, but it we have very good connections. Probably going to be going up pretty soon. Oh, for sure. Matter of fact, that's why you're seeing the American Silver Eagle being priced at $36, $37 when the spot price on the computer is $22. So it just, it, the computer is completely an irrelevant price because it's not real. It's manipulated, but they're losing because getting a hold of the real physical is going to be a challenge in the future. We're blessed to have a refinery connection. We're blessed to have some European supplies. 
we are very honored in our relationships. So we're all okay there, but I would highly recommend going to Cornerstone Asset Metals, at least have a conversation to try to understand because these bank bail-ins are real. And when you see, Stan, how I was kind of connecting the dots through all of this and how it's all kind of coming together, I'm pretty concerned that it's the time is getting close. Well, and I that, know that uh, the Cornerstone Asset Metals people love Prophecy Club people. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, t tell us about that. There's a difference, well, right? Yeah, because they're they're not only informed, but they're they're kind um, for the most part. I mean, they're, there's very they're very kind and they're very sweet people. I mean, some of them, even the smallest orders, they're so sweet. Like you just want to you just want to do things for them. It, it's just wonderful. And that I have to say, Stan, is such a um, testimony to you and the whole ministry organization there, it's because crazy. so many people in the Christian kingdom are completely aloof to what is coming. And we're not hyper. Like, I'm not hyper about this. I'm not a doomsdayer. I feel like I'm a watchman on the wall saying, hey, here's what's going on. Let's be properly positioned so we benefit coming out of this tragedy mm -hmm. so we can help others not only around us but within the ministry. All right. Uh, let me wrap it up. Though. So first of all, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Very uh, in informed guy coming on and bringing us up to date. Thank you. God bless you, Stan. Thank you. Terry Saka. Okay. So if you want to get a hold of uh, Terry Saka, Cornerstone Asset Metals, you can go to cornerstoneassetmetals.com or you can call them 888-747-3309. I'll repeat it. 888-747-3309. 888-747-3309. Cornerstoneassetmetals.com. Say Prophecy Club and be kind. <laughs>